Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest, and today we've got this Top Don JS3000 Jump Starter. Uh, I was sent this a few weeks ago, so I've thrown it in my truck and I've been using it. And you're going to see it in the video today. So I'll show you what the tool is like, and if it's something you'd be interested in, check out the link in the top of the description and in the pinned comment. So here's a video. It's a normal Roadside Rescue, and we'll be using this tool on both different vehicles that we'll be working on today. So we're going to jump right into it. And the first one, we're going to visit a 2018 Volkswagen T1 that occasionally isn't starting well. So we're going to go see what's up with that. And there's a perfect time to use this. If you get this tool, you'll get lifetime tech support, a one year quality guarantee and a 30 day money back guarantee. So first thing I like to do when I get out here is just to jump start it and make sure that it's not actually a starter issue or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in this jump starter, this JS3000 amp. It'll jump start a 9 liter gas engine or a 7 liter diesel engine. It'll cover a wide range of vehicles you can use it on. And it also works as a 2400 milliamp hour power bank. I've been using it daily for a couple of weeks and I've only charged it once. It's still at 75% battery life and... The, since I've charged it, I've jumped at least 10 vehicles off. You can see here, it doesn't it doesn't arc. It has a ton of safeties built in. It's got some flashlights here so you can set it out if you're on the side of the road. And unlike traditional jumper cables, you can't really cross connect it. It's got safeties built in. And it'll start up a car no problem. Let's check it out here on my customer's T1. These are way safer. And they take up way less room. All right, and there you go, that starts up nice and easy. Occasionally it wouldn't start, it was really weak at starting before. And occasionally this T1 would shut off after it started. It would usually turn right back on, but it was a bit nerve wracking and there was no need to deal with that. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this battery. One of the things I like most about this jump box is that it has this rubber all around the edges and that covers the charging port. And I love battery packs like this where you can actually take the jumper cables off of it and you can carry it around as a battery pack. It just makes it a little bit lighter. All in all, this is one of my better jump packs. That breeze is nice. It's not too hot. It's gonna get hot, close to 100. But it's still early in the morning. I try and do everything in the morning if I can. Outside. Uh, we're in the evening, just not in the midday. That's when I'll do all my computer work and stuff. He actually took this to the dealership a couple of times and had this battery tested. Both times they told him it was fine and they were gonna need to dig into his car to do some diagnosing. So I was a little bit skeptical as to whether or not there was actually an issue going on or if it was just a case of an old battery as this is an original battery and the car's about six years old now. Uh, so basically there you go two different tests. Uh, we've got a DIN test here and a cold crank and amps test both failed at the same rate so um, I also you can see where I've scratched on the posts there The post itself to make sure I was testing that last time and not a bad connection between the post and the terminal so I verified that I like to clean up these terminals while they're still on. That way they don't twist and I can get them nice and clean. This car just now looking at everything. Still got 100% power. I love the output that it's a battery bank um, and that you can actually disconnect the cables. I have some jump boxes where the cables are connected and that's fine because I use them as jump boxes but occasionally I want a battery bank or I'll send one with my wife or when I go camping or whatever and it's super nice to have an extra battery pack that you can plug your phone into and charge it while you're out camping or whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna have to reset the battery on the car's computer after we're done here. That's pretty simple. Let's disconnect that. Negative first thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this jacket off now. And then just a 13 millimeter there, we'll get that off. Oh, 
change a nerve in my neck. <laughs> So the tree has a spot for an AGM battery as well, which is the one that's smaller. And not the one that we were using before, so better to get an AGM in this. That's what I was gonna say. I'm upgrading this to an AGM from a EFB battery, uh, just cause it's a little bit better. And they're a little bit more reliable. And you can do it on these, so just gonna recode it with my scan tool. Go ahead and get this installed, get its jacket back on. Just tight enough so it doesn't spin by hand when you wiggle it there and then I'll put some silicone paste on it so it doesn't corrode. This keeps that corrosion from building up on those terminals. Alright, that was nice. I was able to use this jump box several times to start that T1 uh, while I was testing it and I didn't have to worry at all. I knew I wasn't going to run out of juice in this battery pack. Definitely helps as a mobile mechanic and I like to have tools that are bigger than what they probably should be or need to be just in case of an emergency. I like to come a little bit over prepared, if you will. This jump box does that and more with this nice carrying case. That way you don't have to worry about losing your jumper cables or damaging your jump box. Up next, we're gonna look at a Prius. It's a 2007 Prius. This is the car of a medical school student. They're in medical school right now. This student got injured in about three months ago. They haven't driven their vehicle since. So we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna change the oil and we're gonna fill up a flat tire, but I'm just gonna go ahead and check all the tires and we're gonna replace that battery. So since their car's been sitting around for three months, the battery's died, I'm gonna go ahead and bring a new battery with me and we'll slap that in there. And we're gonna go ahead and test that old battery. And again, just to make sure that it's not a starter issue before we go tearing things apart, we'll go ahead and give it a jump start and make sure that it's not anything else, like maybe a seized up alternator or something like that. And, uh, it would be really weird, but it could be something weird like that that you wouldn't really consider. So it's a great way to test that before we take the other battery out or take the caps off our new battery and void the return. All right, kind of grab a flashlight. This parking garage is by far one of the most well lit parking garages I've ever been in big of a deal but it would be hard to see back there in that battery compartment so i'll show you how to get that in there and we'll get these tires filled up and the oil changed and have this job done be done with the day it's not hot at all in here it was super warm outside in the sun so it is like pleasantly cool up here like i'm gonna open up a shop in this parking spot cool <laughs> This hood popped. All right, here we go. We're in the back of the Prius with that battery. We're gonna go ahead and jump it off. I could easily do it under the hood as well, but I do have to mess with that battery. Okay. Oh, there we go. Nice. And there's the hood. We got the filter and the oil. And that battery's in the back. I've got to take out the stuff in the trunk though, but the trunk door doesn't open. So I'll just crawl in through the seat. Got a new clean, clean pair of coveralls on for that. Guess your alarm can't go off if you don't have a battery, eh? Since that flashlight lasts forever on that jump pack, just go ahead and use that. I'm not gonna climb out to grab a small flashlight. I've got this in here already from jumping off the battery. Let's get this new one in there. <coughs> and unfortunately, it's my fault. I'm climbing in through the car right now. Oh, that's nice. There's a light right above us. I got a windshield. But this trunk door apparently is one of those uh, owner's secrets. Every car has a few where there's something that only the owner knows how to do on the vehicle. 
you gotta open the fuel door just the right way in order to get it to work or whatever apparently this trunk door latch is the same way and i uh tried to open it so right as i went to open it the customer was yelling no no wait and i tried to open it and apparently i uh, pushed this button into some place that it doesn't come out of for two to three weeks and then the customer will be able to open their trunk again so i don't know you guys tell me in the comments down below what you think i should do some sort of full refund or something you know just gotta just gotta give them the engineers a hand up it's just a marvel how they were able to fit this battery in this vehicle out of all the places that there weren't they couldn't have gone this has got to be the best of them so next time you see a toyota engineer think them boy them are small they done replaced them turnables oh my boys dang but uh we actually need a smaller terminal for i mean it's got some grease on it or something not good for my skin should have put my gloves on uh lost my train of thoughts different terminals let's see what we're gonna do about that i might have to get some shims should we go all the way down on that it's probably not going anywhere i'll give her a couple more twists just in case that feels about tight enough she ain't moving she'll never move harder than that in a moving vehicle gave her the safety test trailer that's what were they pulling in a Prius okay I don't think this jug was gonna overflow but I just emptied it out in case it was hasn't been running a while uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and drain it. If it had sat for a long time and run, or maybe just a little bit, I'd warm it up right now to make sure everything is fun. But it's been like three months, so everything's going to be settled in the oil right now. Perfectly, probably the best case scenario to just drain that out and get everything out. Oh man, that's on tight. I'm gonna bust a knuckle. Come on, boys. Gotta pull. Bust a knuckle, you pull. Man, that's tight. That is on there tight. Let's go with the right arm. Hopefully, I don't want to pull out my shoulder. Got her. Whew. Too tight, boy. Too tight. Cross starters to brow. She's not coming out easy. Let's go ahead and I can't see what I'm doing either. Get that blow it out of there. Okay, get that rag. And just leave that there for a minute. Go ahead and pop that filter off too. Them daggum old boys tighten this filter up real good too. All right, she got my spin. There we go. This glove's just gonna come off after this. Straight up and down oil filter. Just get a new glove. Gasket. Yeah. It's on the new one. Just give it a feel, make sure it's not up there either. Yep. Can't be too careful with that one.
They don't give me much room to tighten that by hand. But we did it. Let's get on out from under here. Clean that up. Clean, clean, clean. Feels clean. As clean as it can be. 3.9 quarts is what they said. Still got that battery unhooked, which is normally easier to do. And if so, I like to do during an oil change just to make sure I don't go absolutely blindedly trying to start the engine or something. So. It feels nice outside. It's not that it got cooler, it's that it started raining. I mean, it's not that this parking garage is cooler, it's that it started raining. Okay, so we have this air vent that uh, vents the battery to the outside of the vehicle. I'm just gonna go ahead and crimp these so they're like an oval. So they'll just be clamping on two, si two sides instead of however many spots they touch on normally since they're not gonna line up perfectly. But uh, it'll still have two good po contact points and a tight grip on this. That's the plan for now. We'll order those OE clamps and get those installed when they get here in like a week or whatever, so. <clears throat> nice, okay. So now we're looking at something like that instead. That'll grab onto that little post until we get that and we don't really risk crunching it too hard and bending the actual battery post, which wouldn't be good. So this this idea I'm a little more comfortable with. Air compressor. Just put it up right there up and fine. And this helps. Rear. Let's get this filled up. This is the main one that's flat, but we'll check them all. I mean, it was like really low, about like 8 psi. So I'll check it for a leak as well, or like some sort of nail or something. It may just be a random old dry rot leak. They don't look like they're uh, terribly new. They're, they've got some dry rot in them. Not a ton, but totally do that. Yeah, too much in that one. Just set that form so it's all balanced. And somebody got sand all over the parking spot I'm in. that overfilled as well. They're probably filling it up from the pressure on the sidewall. We know the doors set to the vehicle's weight. Yeah. And why is the air valve on the bottom side of the tire in here? It's the only place it could have gone. I can't believe they got it in there. I just can't believe they fit that luxury in here. Oh, there's the tow hitch. Yeah, we've been towing. We've been towing with this Prius. Oh, nice. We've got a, what is this, an old Volkswagen spare? Or is that just what Priuses do? I've never seen a Prius spare, I guess. If that's the case. Or the bottom side of one for sure. And that's a job well done. 
unfortunately after i drove that car across town all those lights came on on the dash the triangle of death and the hybrid battery is going to need to be looked at as well when you leave a battery dead for three months it just really doesn't like to recover so that was the case for both their 12 volt battery and their hybrid battery and that's why you need to put a trickle charger on your car if you're not going to be driving it all right so there you go thanks to this jump box we got this prius back over at my place i'm going to take that battery apart and figure out which cell or cells have gone bad in it i give this jump box an 8.5 out of 10. there's nothing i would really change about it everything about it's easy to use no complaints lots of power Thanks again to Top Don for hooking me up with this jump box. If it looks like something you'd be interested in, check out the link in the description. And if you watched to the end of the video, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. I'm going to give away a jump box, so leave a comment down below, and I'll pick a random person who left a comment and try and send them a jump box or get one for them. All you have to do is leave a comment, and I'll pick a random winner in two weeks. Thanks for watching. I'm Ernest. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you on the next episode of Roadside Rescue. Whenever you boost it right there, you can even arc it out, but it'll automatically just shut off.